Laser range sensors can measure long distances with high precision. Today we will try to build not only such a range sensor, we want to use it also as a laser speed gun. Will it be better than our radar sensor? Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. In video number 181, we tried to measure speed using a cheap radar sensor. This project is still in the lab and I expect an update in the next month or so. In the meantime, I started experimenting with another technology we already encountered in video number 119, time of flight sensors used in LiDAR systems. This was one of my long time wishes and it became reachable when I saw these new rangefinder modules pop up on AliExpress. They have no display, but a digital interface. Exactly what we need for our hack. I ordered the one with the biggest specified range and got this module. It consists of a laser diode and some optics. It is not completely clear to me how these time of flight sensors work, because light travels at 300,000 km per second, which means it takes 3.3 picoseconds to move one millimeter. If we want to measure one millimeter, we have to be able to measure this small amount of time. Miraculous. Anyway, first we have to connect the module and make it work. The datasheet says that it uses 19.2 kilobaud signals and the supplier sent a USB to serial converter together with the device. But its supply voltage is only specified between 2.5 and 2.8 volts. So which voltage levels are appropriate for the logic chips? To find this out, I will power the device with the proper voltage and measure the voltage at the TX pin using an oscilloscope. In the standard configuration, TX is at logic level one if nothing is sent. During a signal, this is logic level zero. And really, the pin is at 3.3 volts. A close look at the PCB shows a boost converter with a coil which boosts the input voltage to around 3.5 volts. So we should be secure using our USB to serial converter switched to 3.3 volts. But wait, some converters only change the VCC pin to 3.3 volts and keep the logic pins at 5 volts, which can quickly kill some of the more delicate chips. I'm keen to try this module, so I do not want to ruin right away. This is why I use one of my trusted FTDI converters. Here I'm sure they use 3.3 volt logic for all pins. Then I start YAT, which stands for yet another terminal emulator, and switch it to 19.2 kV. From the manual I know the four commands. Laser on and off, O and C. Slow measurement, D. Fast measurement, F. I have no clue what the difference is between slow and fast. So I send F to the sensor. The laser goes on and the device beeps and I get a distance in meters on my terminal with three digits accuracy. I do not know the meaning of the last number. Cool. It works as expected. Now we can do some tests. But looking at the module, we see a mirror which is uncovered. I assume that ambient light here would hurt. This is why I print a small box with the needed openings for the laser and the lens. Now we have an excellent rangefinder. For the moment without display and logic. Short tests show that the module measures the distances in my lab as long as the light is reflected back to the sensor. If not, we get a different beep and an error message. So we can go on to the next step. Attach a microprocessor. Here I have a nice ESP32 with a small OLED which is waiting for the next comparison of ESP32 boards. This time ESP32 with display. This board seems to have everything needed for our project. So let's write a short sketch. I never use Serial Zero for my projects because I use it for uploading and debugging. Lucky we that we have an ESP32 with three different serial connections. 
From video number 152, we know that we must not use serial 1 because it will crash the ESP. So we will use serial 2, which uses GPIO 16 and 17. Unfortunately, these two pins are not available on my nice TTGO board. So we have to go back to video number 152 to learn how to change these pins to GPIO 32 and 33. Problem solved. Now we can write a simple sketch which sends an F and reads the string with the distance information. And we can use Adafruit's GFX library to drive the display and use big letters to display the distance. But wait, we wanted a laser speed gun, not a laser rangefinder. Are we still on the right track? The radar sensors provided a signal with a frequency proportional to the speed of the object. However, it was not possible to measure distance with these sensors. The laser sensors obviously can measure distance, but they have no output signal for speed. So we have to remember what we learned during the physics classes when we were young. Speed equals delta distance divided by delta time. Easy. We measure two times the distance and subtract one from the other. Delta time can be found if we use the millis counter and calculate the time between the measurements. So we can not only display distance but also speed. To run it at full speed we have to send the start letter, wait for the complete response and immediately after that post the next start letter. But how fast is full speed? The data sheet says 0.3 to 3 seconds. And really, the time between two shots is around 0.3 seconds. And we get three measurements per second. Now we are ready to do some tests. First, how accurate is the device? I mount it on a tripod and measure the distance to the wall. Its accuracy is in the range of plus minus two millimeters as shown in the datasheet. But only if you measure a few shots. It starts to drift if you run continually. And after a while, it starts to be less sensitive and refuses to measure even short distances. I did not find the reason for that behavior. Maybe it has to do with heat. So we have to add a push button to only activate the measurements when needed. In my lab, the distances are short and the ambient light is not very bright. So let's go outside. Our speed gun for sure has to work there. First we want to find out the distance it can measure. And here we discover a fact which quickly can stop the whole project. The range of our 100 meter range meter is maximal 10 to 15 meters, even with quite reflective surfaces. Strange, not what I expected. If you look at the weak laser beam, it becomes clear that this cannot work. It is hardly visible after a few meters. And this normal rangefinder, which is only rated for 40 meters, creates a much brighter beam. Now comes the speed test. As usual, we use our bike. Unfortunately, we do not get results if the distance is more than 5 meters. Why is that? Because the laser point is tiny and it is tough to hit a cyclist over distance. Maybe I have to go more to the gym to get broader shoulders. At least we get good results if we hit the target. Let's summarize what we have so far to decide where to go. We have a rangefinder which works, but not at all up to its specifications. Its range depends on the ambient light and the reflection coefficient of the target. It is challenging to hit the target to get at least the results in the range of the device. So back to the drawing board to solve these issues. How can we ease the targeting of the laser? And which material works best as a target? If you look how police officers and hunters do it, we discover that we have to combine our laser with a binocular. We are makers and a little double-sided tape helps in nearly every situation. And here it is, our laser speed gun, ready for usage. It works. Under suitable conditions, you can see the red dot and direct it to the target. And even if you do not see it, you still know where it is and can aim. The first problem is solved. Finding suitable targets is more difficult. 
During tests, we learned that bright surfaces work better. This is why Marvin has to change his clothes to his white laboratory coat. This is his standard uniform when he has to work scientifically. Unfortunately, this white coat does not work at all. Do not ask me why. So he has to try the next jacket, the official uniform of the Civil Defense of Switzerland. Of course, this service is related to our atomic bomb shelters I showed you in video number 151. These clothes should have a reflective safety surface and we hope this will do the trick. But also here, the reflective parts does not work at all, even not on short distances. Only the brown area works. Also here, do not ask me why. We were surprised as much as you are. The learning? Too reflective is also not good. The next issue is the ambient light. This can be solved by shifting the tests to our garage. No, it does not belong to me. Neither all these cars. Here we can test without sunlight and distances of up to 100 meters. Our tests show that we can measure a maximum of about 50 meters if the target has a reasonable white surface. At least better than outside. This is a clear indication for a dispute on AliExpress. This product is wholly oversold and I want at least part of my money back. In darkness, we see the laser pointer over a distance of more than 100 meters, even if the rangefinder only shows results up to 50 meters and only on certain surfaces. We learned that the direction indicators of cars or the white number plates work best. If you can hit these, you get useful readings. But with a driving car, this will be very difficult, even with our professional looking binocular. We did some speed tests, but the results were disappointing. Also with a white coat. At least you see that we gave all we can to make this project a success. Summarized, we have to admit that we did not find the secret sauce. This project is a complete failure. The only thing I can do now is to order a commercial rangefinder for 1000 meters. One thing I learned in the last few days is that we have to divide the specified range by at least a factor of 10, similar to the capacity of batteries made in China. And of course, I keep you posted if I get this rangefinder into my hands. Maybe we will find the secret sauce there. I hope this video was useful or at least a little entertaining. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.